What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video about Pi. If this is your first time on the channel, please take a moment to consider subscribing, turning on that bell notification, and liking this video. Now, just as the title probably says, if I've clickbaited it correctly, this is going to be an opportunity on how to earn more Pi. That's right, more Pi. Now, the way you're going to be earning this Pi is by hosting a Pi node and I'm going to take you through step by step on how to do that and show you the benefits of hosting a Pi node. Now it is a very easy and a very hard uh, uh, setup at the same time but I'm going to recommend use chat GPT and that's what I did and it got us right through it. So without further ado let's jump over and go through setting up your very first Pi node. Before we get going, if you watched the last video, I talked about setting up a crypto trading bot on Pionics, and we usually are running it with Pi. You can see right here I'm holding Pi in my actual rebalancing bot. And then I did do a temporary pause on my Pi and USDT bot so I can hold Pi, and I'm actually watching the price go up, but I'm holding a lot more Pi, so I'm very happy with that because we did a Bitcoin to USDT trading bot. And I'm going to do a full video on this after a 72-hour breakdown. But in the past uh, 48 hours, we're actually up 9.57% APY, even though it's showing profit is down. But we're in percentage of, we're actually gaining 0.05% based off of our balance, which is pretty solid. We've done 55 trades in the past 24 hours, and we're making about three cents a trade because we are very, 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 very wide on this. But we'll do a full video. If you want to get involved, check out some of my Pi crypto trading bot videos, trading the Pi token, link for everything is in the description as well. But let's get to setting up your Pi node. Obviously, if this is your first time finding out about Pi, because for some reason my video went super duper viral and is getting millions of views currently as we speak, not really as we speak, but as you're watching this, because this is past David talking to future you and me, and uh, viral video, but if you're new to Pi, then it is a very simple free to mine and earn cryptocurrency. It's currently sitting at a dollar eighty, and it just went launched and went mainnet. It's a project I've been in with the past. I don't know, 2,148 days, and I really kind of got back into it as it went launched mainnet, but anyway, it's free. It's free to earn. Sign up in the link below. It's all on your mobile app, and since I'm running a node to earn more Pi, I can actually show you on screen what that is going to look like. So you're going to download the app on your Android or your iPhone, and you're going to get a screen that looks like this on the app, and what you need to do every single day is click on this little button over here that says mine, and as you mine, it's going to give you a mining rate and how much Pi you're going to earn per hour. So right now with me running a node, with me inviting my friends, family, wife, grandparents, parents, kids, and all their devices, you guys for watching this video and clicking on the link below, and for a couple of other things that we can go over on the Pi Network, we are earning uh, more, and we're earning a mining rate of 0 0.0277 Pi a day. So with doing some math, 0 0.02, not a day, an hour. So we earn that in an hour. So in 24 hours, we're earning 0.6648 pi at today's base price of a dollar 80 so we're earning a dollar 20 in pi just from that so the more people you have sign up and the more people that turn on the device every single 24 hours to mine and increase your mining rate your security circle that you set up and your referral team you're going to increase your rate i've seen it all in like lockups all that stuff that's that that's pi 101 so anyway download pi and then if you want to set up a node, which we're going to go over the specifics here, this is what you need to do. Now, what exactly is a Pi node? In short, the Pi node is you're supporting the network by hosting the blockchain and update and keeping the blockchain updated and helping validate and run transactions. Now, I know people are going to jump in the comments and say, well, there's no validating nodes out there right now. And that's correct. They only have like two or three super nodes that are validating transactions. But as the mainnet continues, to, since they went mainnet and as the project launches even further, more and more nodes are going to be selected to be validators and validate transactions on the blockchain. So all in all, right now, all you're doing is supporting the Pi Network blockchain by hosting a node. And when you're doing that, if you go here, you can see that because I'm hosting a node and right now the tuning is in progress and this is only for the past 24 hours, I'm getting an increased node bonus of 1.37. I also need my node to be approved. I submitted it for, you know, um, uh, requested some like, you know, an application to be a big node, blah, blah, blah. But as of right now, it's increasing my mining rate by 1.37. So that goes into the formula up here on my base rate plus my boosters plus my rewards. So that is my incentive to earn more pi. It increases my mining rate at, per hour. So that is my incentive to host a node. Now, this is basically what your node looks like. How do you host a node? It's very, very, very simple. 
All you really need is a decent computer. I recommend reaching out to the Fry Foundation if you wanna go on low power reserves, low power costs, because you're gonna to need to run a, a computer 24 seven. Now I have it on my big computer here, but this is always running because I'm always doing stuff on it. But you can go to the Fry Foundation, you can use Code Nerdy Dude stuff and you could save yourself a couple of bucks. Also, you can set up and get a Fry license and earn Fry tokens. So not only will one of these mini devices host the Pi node to earn you more Pi, but you can also earn the Fry token. I've done plenty of videos on them before for. Look that up on the previous bits of the channel because I'm totally going to forget to put anything up above. But I recommend that. I have a giant gaming PC. You used to be able to see it behind me. It's right over here. And that's what I'm running my node on. So that way you can also see on screen. But I also put the node on one of the mini fry devices. And then I realized I'd rather be able to show you guys how I run it. And that computer's on 24 7 anyway. Now, in short, you basically need a multi core processor, 8 megabytes of RAM, and Windows 10. And that's it. So get yourself one of those, or if you're watching this on a PC, chances are, and it's relatively new, you have enough to run a Pi node. It's very, 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 very simple. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do then is go over to node.mindpi.com. Uh, and this is where I say I'm not a financial advisor, do your own research, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, you're gonna go to pi um, node.mindpi.com, and you can look at everything here, you can do everything you want, but you're just gonna essentially click download node and it's going to take you to uh, Mac or Windows. Obviously, we're on Windows, so we're going to download our Windows. I don't want to download it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so anyway, we download it for Windows. There you can see. We, let's just pretend we downloaded it. Once that's done, you're then going to have this setup right here that we showed on screen. And I actually hate that, so we're going to put Pionics back so we're in dark mode. Uh, we're going to have the Pi node. Uh, app right here and up in the top right you're going to see pi app which is going to be our pi app and that's going to be directly linked to our mobile device and pi node now what you need to do is if you click on pi node it's going to take you to a login screen and what's going to happen on that login screen is you're going to get a code on screen just just hold on to that code so then you're going to go back to your pi app you're going to go to your mind pi button right here you're going to go down here you're going to scroll down on your phone to increase and then you're going to hit run the node. So when you hit run the node, I'm not gonna do it right now, but when you hit run the node, it's gonna then take you on screen to the code that you're gonna put on screen here. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna then take you to the on screen here where you put that code in. After you put that code in, you're, it's then gonna log you in and then you're gonna be taken to this screen. Actually, I just discovered something. I was doing a 24 hour test yesterday and my mobile device doesn't say it, but it says it here. Utility bonus, because right now we got a .09. I need to use the Pi browser more. So but you definitely need to make sure you use Pi browser. There's some games and everything you can use on there. So, hmm, interesting. Good to know. We'll cover that in another video. Anyway, so once you have your Pi node, you're going to be taken to this screen where you have this little slider left and right. Turn it on. Well, you don't have to at this moment. But anyway... Uh, this is where you're pretty much going to have it turned on, and you could see that right now my computer is up and running. The last block number, the local block on the computer is ending in 577. The last block number for the Pi network is ending in 5, 580 now, so we just had three blocks in the past few seconds, so I'm up to date. What's going to happen is it's going to then first for you say your computer is not running the blockchain. You have to do a couple more things. So what, this is where ChatGPT and stuff is going to come in. So you're going to go to visit tech setup and it's going to walk you through exactly what you need to do. It's very easy. I'm going to put that in asterisks because I'm going to show you a couple of things here in just a moment. But for the most part, it's I want to get this set up so I'm ready to go. In most part, it's very easy. Install Docker. You're going to drop this down and it's going to give you a link to install Docker. It looks like Docker is correctly installed, so I don't have that link. So all you're doing, you're going to click on the link here to install Docker. It's going to take you to the Docker website. You download it, you install it, you get ready to go. Now, what's probably going to happen if you're successful, Docker is going to load. You're not going to be successful. Docker is going to load, and then you're going to be able to see that you have the Pi network running, and you're only using a set amount of your CPU and so on and so forth. But what happens is you have to set up a virtual machine for Docker to run, and that's where it's going to be successful. So what you're going to do and what's going to happen, and this is where I started using ChatGPT, and I'm going to show screen grabs of it because I don't want personal information showing, is that when you run Docker, you're going to log, it's going to ask you to log in, but then it's going to crash and it's going to give you an error code. Let's see if we can open this up. All right, it's going to give you an error code. You're just going to take my word for it. That this, I mean, this is the error code. So you get this error. Now what I did 
is I just told ChatGPT, I'm installing Docker on my PC and I'm getting this error. And then I copy and pasted the error. And this says that the error suggests that blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and grab another screen grab of that. So we pasted that error code and now ChatGPT tells us step-by-step step what we need to do. And that's awesome. So it's gonna say right here, the error suggests that WSL2 is not supported on your computer machine configuration due to missing components. Follow these steps to resolve it. This is the hardest thing I had to do was reset my, my PC. Uh, so then you restart your PC and you access your BIOS. Now I have an AMD motherboard, so all I had to do is hit restart and then I held F2 and then my BIOS came up. In the BIOS, we looked for an Intel virtualization technology or something along those lines. I didn't know 100%. Let me see if I can find a BIOS screen, standby. So for the most part, this is what my bio screen looked like. And if you can't see it, let me see if I can zoom in. Perfect, okay. This is what the bio screen looked like roughly. It's a little newer, a little more yellow, but essentially everything is the same. And what you need to do in AMD, and you can, again, chat GPT, what you need to look for if you have any questions. But this is what I did for AMD. I, I literally went to chat GPT and I said, where do I find step one on an AMD gigabit motherboard? And then I used F2 to enter BIOS. And chat GPT told me I need to look for advanced mode inside advanced mode I need to look for tweaker and then inside tweaker I need to look for advanced CPU settings and then inside advanced CPU settings I need to look for Intel virtualization technology VTX and enable it so that would have been right here for extreme tweaker and then I would have looked for something along the lines of CPU settings and then I would have looked for something along the lines of in uh, Intel virtualization oh no wait 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 SMV mode I'm sorry I was just reading you the Intel CPU. That's ChatGPT. It's giving us the, C the Intel CPU. If for AMD um, CPUs like mine, oh my God, I said AMD motherboard. AMD CPUs like mine, we went to advanced mode and then we went to CPU configuration and then we went to SMV mode, secure virtual machine mode and enable it. Then you save and exit and then you restart your PC. After I did that, I just continued along with the steps of uh, chat GPT. And then it, let's see here. And I said, the work uh, that worked, what's the next setup? So then the next thing that we needed to do is we wanted to verify that that was working. So we go to the performance tab of our CPU and then we check to see if virtualization is enabled in that performance screen. As long as that's enabled, then you're good to go. So the next step that you needed to that you need to do, and I'll pull it right up here, is continue on. I don't like where I'm at. Let me go ahead and enlarge myself. Is you continue on, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the next screen over here, and it's super easy, super easy. So we need now need to enable the Windows features. The re way we do that is we're gonna use PowerShell, and PowerShell is basically a fancier config for Windows. So we hit the Windows button, and I think it was. R? No. What was it? Alt W? Was it? No. What the heck was it? Oh, it was WinX. Windows X. Oh, I don't know if it's going to do it while I'm on here. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's going to do it while I'm. Oh, well. Anyway. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah. Let's get PowerShell. You're going to run it as an administrator. So let's see if it'll open up here. Perfect. You can run it as an administrator. And then all you need to do is you leave your command prompt up right there. And then you're going to go to ChatGPT and it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. You're going to hit copy. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to make sure your course is blinking. And you're going to hit Control V and enter. And then it's going to run through this information right here. You're going to restart your PC. And then you're going to install WSL2. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to hit copy. You're going to come over to Windows PowerShell, hit Control V, enter, and then it's going to install your configuration. Really, really simple stuff. And then you just want to kind of double check everything. Let me get another screenshot for you. You're going to kind of want to double check everything when it's all done. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to do, you're going to go back into PowerShell. You're going to copy and you want to make sure it's at the default version too. Then you're going to open your Docker. And at that point, you're going to be logged in. And if everything goes smoothly, you're gonna see Pi Network is now installed. And if it's not installed, it, it's gonna be installed once you go back. As Because it, it, it's set to check that Docker is installed on your PC and it'll look like this. It looks like Docker isn't correctly installed. Run the Docker daemon, you're good to go. But if you wanna check, what you can do as well is you can go and do, to make sure your virtual and your PowerShell and everything's correctly done, you're gonna run Docker, run Hello World. So I'm actually gonna do that. And I'm gonna put my cursor there and I'm gonna hit enter. 
And then I'm gonna go back to my Docker, and now you can see right here, hello world. So everything on my PC and my virtual machine are connected and set up perfectly. So I'm very, very happy with that. Now, last steps, this is the last, it's pretty easy. You wanna make sure you open your router ports. So these are the ports right here. And all you're gonna do is, and this is where I'm not gonna show you anything on screen because this is now where we get into the personal stuff. But all you're gonna do is go into your IP address or I have an Asus app. I mean, I did it on the app when I was taking a dump. It was that easy. And you're gonna go into your uh, router settings. You're gonna look for uh, WAN or yeah, you're gonna look for WAN and then you're gonna look for port forwarding and you wanna make sure you open all these ports. And so what's probably gonna happen is it's gonna show you something like what's the local IP address. You can get that from IP config inside of your PowerShell. And then you're gonna put in the IP range, which mine made me do this nine times. So I had to open port 31400 all the way to 31409. So I had to do it 10 times actually, cause math, but some other devices or other port openings will let you do 31400 dash 31409. Once that's all done, and this part's not open just yet because it, you know you could check all that stuff now, but you can't. But once all that is done, if you hit continue, you're gonna come back here. If you reset your computer, reset your router, everything's all reset and ready to go, you're gonna come back to the main screen and you're gonna turn this purple, this thing, this little slider, purple. And then it'll say, right now it says your computer's not running the blockchain, but give it a second to refresh since I just turned it back on. last started a few seconds ago. Boom, your computer is running the blockchain. And it's going to take about five to 10 minutes for it to catch up because on the computer, you don't have any of the Pi Network blockchain. So you're gonna be looking at whatever the current block is for the blockchain, and then your computer needs to sync up to it. And that's it. If you have any troubleshooting issues, you wanna go to the troubleshooting and you wanna take a look at this right now. As long as the last block, you got it a few seconds ago, you got the latest protocol, your state is synced. This isn't, this none of this, but yeah, node switch is on, consensus container, yes, looks good. Consensus container running, supporting other nodes, no, not yet. Incoming connections, nothing yet. Outgoing connections should be between one to eight. I usually sit at eight, it's at seven just because I reset everything, but everything is good to go. I turned on the run the additional blockchain API services uh, just because, but boom, we just went back to eight. So once that's all done, give it about an hour or so, go back to your Pi app, go to your mining button right here, scroll down and see if you've got extra node bonus. And that's it. Anywho, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out on Discord, Telegram, or X or leave a comment below. Like I said, if you have any questions or get stuck, use chat GPT. Just do a screenshot of what your issues you're having, copy and paste the error that you get, in case it's a different one, post it into chat GPT. It's going to take you through step by step by step by step. Like no joke. And then if you have any errors from there, keep posting them into chat GPT. I, I use this tool for my, I use it all the time, use it for work, using it for personal. Uh, it's awesome, absolutely love it. It got me to get this node installed and it, obviously you've seen some of the thumbnails in the video titles, I'm using ChatGPT. So, like I said, questions reach out, I'll be happy to help. If I don't know the answer, I'll get it off ChatGPT for you. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notification, all that good stuff. I'm Oprius, we'll see you guys next time.